Okay, I had a request for uh, Newton Raphson in uh, two dimensions. Well, really, it was five dimensions, but um, if you can do it in two dimensions, you can do it in five dimensions. So I'm going to show you how to do it in two dimensions, and we're going to go from there. So I'm going to have function Newton 2D, uh, clear CLC, close all. Nah, let me get rid of my clear. Okay, so say I have a, a multi-dimensional function. So function, uh, let's see, uh, z equals f of x comma y, z equals x squared plus y squared, and I'm gonna say minus five. Okay, so then I'm gonna say, well here, let's do five squared, and I'll do, well, I'll show you why I do five squared in a minute. So then to evaluate this function, I'm going to say x goes from negative 10, 0 0.1 to 10, y goes from negative 10, 0 0.1 to 10. Uh, we need to make a mesh grid of x comma y, and then we need to make our function, and then we can do mesh x, x comma y, y is easy. Okay. All right, so there is our uh, function. Um, we essentially want to use newton raphson to find where f is equal to zero. Now, essentially, if you watch my last video, this is very simple. You need an initial condition x0. Now, I'm going to call it r0 because this is a vector, so I'm just going to say my initial condition is 10, 10. Okay. Remember, this is two dimensions, so you need an initial condition for both. So my initial guess on x is 10, and my initial guess on y is 10. And then you just say while f of r0 of 1, comma r0 of 2. Remember, because the first element is x, the second element is y while the absolute value of this guy is greater than 1e2. I'm going to iterate, so I just say that r0 is r0 minus alpha times, and then it's f of x comma y, which again is r0. And you know what? I'm actually just going to change. Mm -hmm. How do I want to do this? That's fine. Yeah, I'm only gonna have to do this once. R zero two, and then normally I would divide by f prime of R zero one comma R zero two, and then that would be it. Now here's the problem. If I come down here and I do z prime f prime of x comma y. How do you take the derivative of a multidimensional function? Well, you don't get a derivative, you get a gradient, which is a vector. So z prime is actually equal to the derivative of the function with respect to x, and then the derivative of the function with respect to y. So df dx is 2 times x, that's fine df dy is 2 times y, and then the, the scalar constant goes away. Okay, so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to iterate on this, I'm going to let alpha equal 0 0.2, and then I'm going to hold on, and I'm going to plot r0 of 1, r0 of 2, and I should get to 0, and then I'm going to do a, um, a red square with a marker size of 20. All right, I'm gonna hit play, and let's see. It looks like I threw an error. Let's see. Uh, a matrix dimension of much degree. So this is what I was. This is what I didn't touch on, and this is the issue with doing multidimensional functions, right? So f prime is a gradient, which is 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 fine when you take the derivative here, but when you actually do this, you have a scalar divided by a gradient now. So you actually have to put a dot here, and then when you hit f5, let's see, plot. Uh, okay, so that's actually a plot three. There we go. So there is my my square there. Um, let's spit out what the answer is. So I got 
3.5362, 3.5362. Now if I do a different initial condition, say I go at negative 10, now I get negative 3.53, whatever, and then let's do, I don't know, let's do negative 5, 2.5, I get this, negative four, six. Again, I'm still at zero, right? If I type in f of r0 of one, r0 of two, I, I get 0 0.0087, right? If I increase my bounds to say five, right? I iterate more, I'm getting zero. So what's happening? Well, this is really just because if I, I look at this function x squared plus y squared minus 5 squared when this equals 0 that's really the equation of a circle right the equation of a circle is uh, r times cosine of theta and then r times sine of theta and theta it goes from what uh, let's see 0 to 2 times pi 100 and then r is obviously 5 right we defined 5 down here um, and then I can just plot 3xc, yc, 0 times xc just to give me my, my, my zero axis and then I'm going to do a blue line, actually I'm going to do a red line, uh, line width, I'm going to do 5 just so you can see it. See here, this quadratic function crosses the zero axis in multiple places. When you have a one dimensional function, it only crosses the zero axis in one spot. Here, you have this uh, line, if you will, of solutions. So depending on your initial condition, remember negative 5, 2.5, if I do negative 8, um, 7.8, and I hit F5, um, well, okay, that was, those were pretty simple. Let's do positive 8. Notice that again that my function is going to land wherever that gradient leads me. So if I do, say, uh, 0, newton raston converges. Ah, so I get a nan. All right, so let's do 0 0.1. There we go. So there, and there's my solution. So you typically, when you're using newton raston for a n-dimensional function, what you actually want to do is you want to find the minimum. Now we remember what to do to find the minimum. I'm just going to copy this up here. So I have new initial conditions. Copy, paste, and remember we know that instead we want the absolute value of f prime. We can't really do that, so I'm just going to do 4ii equals 1 to 100. I'm going to iterate 100 times. I'll, I'll use index for consistency. And remember it's not f prime and f, it's f prime and then dot divided by f double prime. Now this is where the, uh, the complicated parts come in. So and remember, this isn't 0, this is f of r0 of 1 and r0 of 2. Whatever the minimum is, we don't know. So if we come down here, function z double prime equals f double prime of x comma y. Remember, the multi-valued function, the derivative is the gradient, which is a vector. Well, the second derivative is called the Jacobian, which is a matrix. So z double prime is equal to df squared dx squared then df squared dx dy and then df squared dy dx and then df squared dy squared. Okay so what is df squared dx squared? Well that's for taking the derivative of 2x with respect to x again, which is 2, then we have dx squared, df squared, dx, dy. So that's taking 2x, differentiating with respect to y, which is 0. And you can do the same thing for the other two, and you'll get 2 for dy squared, and then df2, dx, dy, dx is 0. And for a symmetric function, dx, dy, and dy, dx should be the same. So then this is just a constant function. But remember, you can't dot divide by a matrix. So what you actually have to do is you have to invert the matrix and then multiply it by the gradient. Let me maximize this so you can see it. 
So for a multi-valued function, you can just do f dot divided by f prime, where f prime is a gradient. When you're doing the minimum, you have to do the inverse of the Jacobian times the gradient. And assuming I didn't type anything in wrong, I should get, let's do this in, uh, in yellow. I should get a yellow circle at the center, and I do. There's your yellow circle at the, at the, at the center because that is the minimum of the function. Um, I will caution you that doing a minimum of a 5D function, it, you're gonna run into a lot of uh, what's called local minimums. So if you can imagine your, um, perhaps your, your function is not x squared plus y squared minus 5x squared, but it's like, you know, four times x squared, x to the fourth plus two times x dot squared plus y squared. And then, you know, your, your derivative of x is 16 times x cubed plus four times x, and then d, f, d, y is the same. And then the second derivative is whatever 16 times three is, I don't wanna do that in my head plus four, and then take the derivative with respect to y, you still get zero, that's still two. If you do that, um, in this case, it looks like everything was okay, but you you might run into situations where you have you know multiple waves, like a, like a sinusoid. If you do a sinusoid, um, yeah, let's actually do that. Let's, do, let's just do sine of, uh, you know, three times x. Right, so then your your df dy is um, three times cosine of three dot times x. Df dy is zero, and that that's actually going to throw an error because you, you know you you have a, a gradient which is zero, so you might just need to multiply by y. Um, so you get you're going to get y here times three, and then here you're just going to get sine of three dot times x. And this is getting really, really complicated. I feel like, I feel like I should stop. If you do the second derivative of x, you're gonna get y times three minus times sine of three dot times x. Uh, with respect to y, you're just gonna get cosine of three times x. Second derivative of y is just zero. And then um, the derivative of dy with respect to x, you're gonna get three times cosine of three dot times x, and and, and I probably I probably lost and lost something here, line 55. Okay, dot times x. Oh my goodness! Right, so um, let's get rid of that circle that I plotted. So that was a crazy function. It actually, it actually looks pretty sweet, but if you look. Right, where is the minimum? Well, I don't know, there's a saddle point here. But essentially your minimum is really infinite. Uh, I'm surprised the whole function didn't blow up. Um, it looks like what happened was, whoop, uh, am I not, where am I going the wrong way? I mean, it looks like there's this weird yeah, so it looks like the whole thing just oscillated in between here. So I guess what my the moral of this story is, if your function is very very crazy, uh, like something like this crazy rainbow plot, um, make sure you try a, a, a numerous uh, you know initial conditions. Um, I would I would try you know a gr a grid if you will of initial conditions. That way you ensure that you've you found your minimum. And I, I did this on the fly. I uh, I probably made a mistake somewhere with my my differentiation. Uh, if this is my multi-valued function with respect to x, with respect to y, I probably made a mistake in here somewhere. But y you get the idea. So uh, hopefully that helps out. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. Good luck.